Uh, good morning, everyone. In the world of generative AI, how many of you are concerned about giving the right access to the data for different users of your application? I see some hands. Um, how many of you have a defined strategy for it? Only a couple, so yeah. Um, I'm Bani Sharma, and I'm a senior solutions architect with AWS. Uh, and I'm Hardik Vasa. I'm a senior solutions architect with AWS as well, focused on generative AI technologies. And today we are going to walk you through how we can implement persona-based access control to your generative AI applications for your enterprise data. So let's get started. So here is the agenda for today. Uh, we are going to talk about some of the data access challenges in generative AI applications. We are also going to talk about the retrieval augmented generation, or RAG, uh, with Amazon Bedrock. Uh, we are going to then implement role-based access control in our RAG application using Amazon Bedrock features. Uh, we are then going to talk about some of the architecture patterns for data access, and we are going to finish it off with a quick demo. So what are some of the common data access challenges that we see in our generative AI application? Uh, we need to have a robust authentication mechanism. Um, and once the user is authenticated, we also need to make sure the user only has access to the right data and not an uncontrolled data access. After that, we also want to make sure our system is scalable. So as we onboard more and more users to our application, it should be able to handle it instead of needing the application to be changed. After that, we also want to make sure, because we are adding new data, lots of data every day, we don't want to end up with data silos, and we should still be able to have unified information access to our data. And last but not the least, we don't want to impact our existing user experience. All of these stringent security controls should seamlessly integrate with our existing user experience. And all of that uh, is encapsulated in, in what we call as data governance. So let's see how we can address uh, these challenges uh, with data in our generative AI applications. Let's start with RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation. So what is RAG? RAG is a mechanism with which we use our existing enterprise data and feed it to our large language models as prompts to make it more context aware so that it gives us better, more accurate responses in our Gen AI application, like Chatbot, for example. Now, um, let's see RAG in action. Uh, RAG has two uh, main parts. So first of, uh, uh, first of uh, the parts is the data ingestion workflow. This is where we are going to prepare our data for our application. So we have our data sources. As a company, you must have a lot of enterprise data scattered everywhere in different kind of data sources. So we use that data. We convert it into what we call as chunks. And these chunks are then sent to an embedding model, uh, an embedding large language model, which uh, uh, converts these chunks into embeddings and stores them in vector database or vector store. So this is the data ingestion workflow. Now moving on to the next part, we have our text generation workflow. So this is where we have a user using um, our uh, chatbot application or any generative AI application and asking questions and chatting with our documents. So what happens is the user asks question in natural language, which again gets sent to the embedding model. The question gets converted into embeddings. And then uh, we do a search on the vector database. So we try to find similar documents. Once we retrieve those similar documents, we augment our prompt with what we retrieved in the search result. And then the augmented prompt is sent to a large language model, which in turn creates the final response for our application. This is great. Uh, but imagine if the prompt augmentation that we see here 
and the conversion of our uh, user question in natural language to embeddings. And the whole creation of our vector database uh, is managed for you by an AWS service. This is exactly what Knowledge Bases for Amazon Bedrock does for you. Amazon Bedrock, as you may have heard, is the fastest way to create, build, scale your generative AI applications in AWS uh, using a single API. And you have a choice of multiple foundation models. So this is what Knowledge Bases for Amazon Bedrock does for you. It provides a single API and creates an end-to-end -end RAG workflow for you. Behind the scenes, it's still using the vector database that uh, we would be creating and doing a search on that. Now, in this diagram, the data source that you see, if we think about the AWS context, it could be all your data stored in uh, an S3 bucket. And then the vector database that you see here, it could be an Amazon open search service. There are other choices as well that you get with knowledge bases, like Redis, Pinecone, Amazon Aurora, PG Vector, so, and, and actually more. So you have uh, some, some choices there, but for this uh, lightning talk, we have chosen um, Amazon Open Search Service. Now let's see how Knowledge Bases integrates with our application. So imagine a scenario of your company that you work for. So you have a lot of data and you have, uh, for this example, let's assume you have a lot of marketing data, which can be seen as the leads document here. And you also have a lot of finance, uh, financial data, which can be seen as the profit or profit and loss document here in this diagram. So you have created the vector database using your existing documents. And th then you have different personas within your organization. So you have CFO, CEO, and, and more such personas. So you, you also have built a, a chatbot application, let's say, for your organization. And now the CFO is chatting with the document. So he's asking questions. Um, like, um, um, give me a report of profit and loss uh, in 2022 and 2023. So the question that he asks gets sent to the knowledge bases for Amazon Bedrock. It does the search against our vector database. And then uh, based on what search results are, are retrieved, we send it to the large language model as context, and it creates a final response for us. So this is great. Now, if the same CFO is asking uh, questions about leads uh, or marketing-related document, the same workflow will get triggered, and he would still be able to get all the answers that he's asking from marketing documents. This is because the scope of the search is the entire vector database. When we do the search, we search the entire vector database that we created. Now, what if we don't want the CFO to access any marketing-related data? So this is when we are going to implement persona-based access. And let's see how we can do that. So again, we have our documents. So here you will see two additional documents here, which are our metadata files. So in addition to our marketing and finance-related documentation, we are also going to upload some metadata files here. Now, uh, we are also going to integrate, um, so you may have some existing IDP that you use. It could be Okta or, or any other uh, IDP uh, that you're already using. So you're going to integrate uh, your existing IDP with, our gen with your generative AI application. Uh, we have used Amazon Cognito here, for example, but it could be anything. The request, um, the, the CFO is asking the same questions, right? The request gets passed to an API layer that you see here, which retrieves a filter. This filter is retrieved based on what access the CFO has, the access level of the CFO. This filter, along with the question that the CFO asks, gets sent to the knowledge bases for Amazon Bedrock, and a search is performed only on the documents which match that filter. Now, whenever the filter matches the metadata that we originally used in creating our vector database, the search result is retrieved. So because the CFO has access to all the finance-related documents, the filter matches the metadata, and only the relevant documents are retrieved, which are sent to the large language model, and a response is created. 
Now, when the CFO is asking questions on marketing documents, lead-related stuff, the filter does not match the metadata. Now, the documents are not returned. So that's how we prevent our CFO from accessing some of the marketing data that he should not have access to. So this is how we reduce the scope of the search limited to only the filter criteria. So this was a quick uh, walkthrough of how we implement persona-based access uh, to our uh, data in our generative AI applications. Let's go to some of the architecture patterns that Hardik is going to walk you through. Right. <clears throat> so we looked at the RAG architecture. We looked at what it um, takes to build such an application on Amazon Bedrock. Now let's look at some of the architecture patterns. How would you go ahead and implement this? We have three patterns. Uh, the first one here is a way to manually update this metadata. So let me walk you through that. You have a use case where you want to create a chatbot application. You have a lot of personas. And now what you do is you have a lot of documents. You may have uploaded them to Amazon S3 bucket. In this pattern, what you would do is manually update the metadata file along with the objects you have in your S3 bucket. So each document in your S3 would have a corresponding metadata file. Now, when the user signs in using an identity provider, again, we are taking example of Amazon Cognito here, the user, uh, the application tier will actually add filter based on the user or the role um, that the user belongs to. When Amazon Bedrock Knowledge Base is created, these documents, along with the metadata, are propagated to Amazon open search vector store. So when the user prompt comes in, along with the filters, the filters are mapped to the metadata in the vector store, and that's how the user only has access to the documents um, that they should have access to, and not the entire vector store. So this is similar to what we saw in the previous slide. The next pattern here is to use the default functionality of knowledge base. So when you create a knowledge base in Amazon Bedrock, it automatically propagates a default metadata, which is nothing but the S3 prefix. So let's talk about the use case. Again, you have a lot of personas in your organization, and you have a lot of documents in your S3 bucket. But now you have these documents stored in each user's prefix. right? So you. And prefixes are nothing but folder structure synonymous to what we have in, in Amazon S3, right? We call prefix in S3. So each user has its own prefix. You upload documents in that, that folder for each user. And knowledge base would propagate this information to the vector store. So what happens is now when the user sign in using an identity provider, the filter is added to the prompt or the query and this maps to the user or the role, and that's how you know, the application understands what is the prefix that it needs to add to this filter. With that information, the filter is again mapped to the metadata, and that user only has access to the files um, belonging to you know, the corresponding documents in that S3 prefix. The last pattern we have here is where, as an organization, you use external identity providers. Um, this could be Microsoft AD, um, Azure Active Directory, it could be Okta, it could be anything else, Bing, uh, Jump Cloud, so on and so forth. In this pattern, similar to what we saw previously, the metadata is now propagated using the S3 access grants. Um, now, S3 access grants allow you to uh, have temporary credentials for the users and role, not just with IAM users and roles, so IAM identities, but also external identities. With S3 access grant, these metadata are propagated to the Amazon Open Search Vector Store, 
using knowledge bases. And then when the user signed in using one of the identity provider, the filter is added. Um, and with access grants, you, you, you request access. In response, um, you get back temporary credentials. And then the application tier adds filter. The filter is mapped to the metadata. And the user has access to their own set of documents. Um, and, and they're restricted to those documents um, and, and not have access to everything in the, in the vector store. So, so these are some of the use cases that we have come across. There are other use cases and other patterns that you can develop off of this. Now, we'll quickly see this in action. We have a two minutes demo that we wanted to show you. So we have built a demo application. Uh, you may be familiar with this interface. It uses the Python framework Streamlit, and it allows us to develop chatbot applications. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see that uh, there's a diagram which shows an example document hierarchy. You know, what documents does each persona should have access to and not have access to? So what we do here is, of course, we don't sign in um, for the sake of demo. We just have a drop-down menu to simulate a persona. So I selected chief information officer as the persona. Just below that, you would see the filters that are applied to this persona, function information, subfunction, strategic merger. And then when I submit a prompt, you know, the approach any company is taking for the merger um, and acquisition, you would see that this prompt uh, would then eventually give you a response. And this response is coming from open search, um, summarized by large language model. You can see that it did give you that response. And you can see the metadata that was written along with the response itself. Now, if I do a, another prompt, and this time I'm asking about lead generation. So this is a marketing-related um, prompt. So it will go search. It will try to match, filter with metadata. It doesn't match. And so this time, you would see that it does not give you back a response. Right? It says, I don't have this information. And this is what we expected, because CIO should not have uh, access to marketing data. right? So now I change the persona. I say, OK, I'm acting as a marketing manager. right? You would see the filter applied to it is focus leads. And filters are nothing but JSON documents. right? Now, I would ask the same question. But as a marketing manager, um, what is the lead generation strategy? And then when I send this prompt, it would go look up the documents in the open search. And this time, it returns back a response. Right? This is what we expected, because the metadata matches the filters. So um, yeah, that, that is what we have here in the demo. Um, and this is just to quickly show you how we have the persona-based access uh, system using metadata and filtering for knowledge bases. To conclude, we have some resources here. Uh, we have the AWS blog that talks about metadata and filtering in much depth. Um, we also have the AWS-led workshop. This is a self-paced workshop that you can um, uh, do in your AWS accounts. And this goes over setting up the entire persona-based access system um, for your enterprise data. And then we have documentation that goes with it as well. So pause here for a minute so you can capture this, um, this links. And with that, thank you so much for being here and for listening to our talk. Um, please uh, you know, complete the session survey in the mobile application. Um, Thank you, and have a great day. Bye. Thank you, everyone.